Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. In this episode, I'm going to look at big machines. Uh, I was going to do the immersive engineering ones, but first of all, I'm going to do some uh, magnetic craft ones, especially because the thing I've put in my hand, which is comes from Immersive Petroleum, and I was looking at this thing. So if we have a look at this, uh, look at the uses of this. It doesn't tell you much about it. The recipe is fairly straightforward. It's just a pipe, some glass, and some treated wood planks. And what you do it, use it for is you use it for um, making uh, lubricating machines. So let's start with that one. So what we see here is a lubricant, and it describes what the lubricant is. So it says nobody's machines are perfect, not even our own. Inevitable frictions between moving parts stop the devices from working at the maximum of their capacity. That's where lubricant comes in. It will ensure that the connected machine will run at full speed, up full throttle, which is one and a quarter times its base speed. So basically, it's improving pump jacks, evacuators, and crushers. So they can all be lubricated. So you've got two choices here. You can either do it with plant oil, which is actually made from the industrial squeezer in immersive engineering, um, but you can also use petroleum lubricant. So I was looking at lubricant here, and you can also, <laughs> also do iron golems as well, so they are, make them stronger. We haven't got any iron golems yet. So let's have a look at um, lubricant. I can't spell, of course, that's a problem. So basically lubricant is this material here, and from immersive petroleum, and the recipe from immersive petroleum is well, you can make it from diesel in thermopneumatic <laughs> thermo processes. We can use the Armageddon tablet. We can use a refinery. Now, this refinery is actually the, the magnetic refinery. So that's what I'm going to do today. But first of all, we have to get oil. Now, there's two ways of getting oil. Actually, three ways of getting oil. The first way from magnetic craft is to use a pump jack. So we're going to have a look at that first. Another way to do it is actually go and get some tanks and put some bucket it into some tanks or pump it into some tanks from some oil that's sitting around the surface we've seen some of that as you're walking along in fact we'll go and visit one of those later on i think if we've got time and the third way is to use the immersive um petroleum pump jack which does it from under bedrock so let's start with the immersive <laughs> magnetic craft pump jack right Here's where I've got all the bits prepared for this. And there's quite a few bits and pieces we need for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bits and pieces out of here. What I should first of all do is just clear my inventory line out here. So bits, we need a bit more space. I think I need a pickaxe. So let's just pick the pickaxe I want to use in here. And then we can take the items out of here. The ones are for the pump jack of these, as you can see. And they didn't go to where I wanted them to go to in the first place, which was the hot bar. <laughs> so over here, I've set up a bit cheaty, really, because if you look at the uh, Magnetic Craft book, it says that you will find oil deposits at zero zero, and then it says two five six zero, and multiples of two five six zero. So multiples of two five six zero basically means zero two five six zero or two five six zero zero or it means two five six zero two five six zero, and of course the minus numbers. So those points, and I went to zero zero, and I went to two five six zero minus two five six zero, and I didn't find any oil. Uh, it's actually an oil deposit, and it's downstairs. So I've set some up down below this particular. Bit. We'll, I'll look at that in a minute. So what we have to do is put this down, and then we just build the machine. So the first block it tells you. Let me just get this stuff into my hot bar here as I want it. I think that's everything I need. It starts off on this right hand side corner and it goes up to the end and then it goes to the next block over here so it says it expected a machine block and it found air so that is position 328 and 63 to 70 so put a block down there and that changes you see that was 269 so if we get over here and just keep putting these blocks down like this we'll build the machine and it'll move along next one so now it's moved on to the 63 i think and it says it's one six machine block and it's found out basically it's the whole bottom row is just machine blocks except for one corner which is a copper coil which should be so it expects the copper machine coil now so we can put this one down here like that and then we can carry on putting on down the machine blocks 
Wish I think I've got in my hand. Swap them over. That was very generous of it. Just normally get the right block as it happens. No. <laughs> and then it wants now it wants iron grate machines. So this is this lot over here. So we just get them too close. What is easy to do is to stand on it, in fact. And there's three of those there, and then we've got three here, and we've got the support column Y. Well, I'll come to that in a second. We'll just carry on with this one. Because this the support column on this one is actually this hardest bit. So it wants expected a corrugated iron one, which is this one. So now it's expected great machines, of course, which is this one. It's a bit awkward to see this. You have to sort of move to the right bit. So it now wants an support column Y, which basically means it's vertical. And you have to put the vertical ones down at the bottom like this. So then it wants the next start, so the next level. Um, or the next row in that case, which is just these three down here like that. And then it starts the next level. So it should want greater machine blocks again. Too close. So that's fine. And then we want to uh, say so it wants a corrugated iron machine. Of course, it's this one here like this. And then it wants iron grate machines. Then it wants another support column Y. Good. And then it wants another grate machine. And finally, it wants a corrugated iron like that. And we can then start over here. So it's another great machine. So one like that. And then it's going to start over here. So it wants more great machines. It's quite a large machine by the time we finish with this thing. Now it wants a support. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. Let's look at this. It says it wants a support column Z. Now that's a horizontal one in the Z axis. So which is basically this way. Now it's not so easy to put the the Z one down. So what I'm going to do is do it the other way around. Put a corrugated iron one here and one on the top. Get rid of those two. And then we can put the these three here are all Z or four actually are all Zs. So we've got the four left of these. So we'll just put these down here like that. So you hit that face and then it puts that one. And then it should change. It should tend to tell me once corrugated iron block. Yeah. And it's just these now. So we can just put these down. So all we've got left just another row of those. Stand on this one and we can finish it off. And it's gone off, so there's nothing telling us, which basically means it's ready. So we can jump down here and we right click this middle bit here and then we get a pump jack. And it'll start searching. So it's searching for oil. Now there is oil down below here because I put it and it says here you get this little symbol here. So now it needs power. So we have to give it power. I didn't bring a connector with it, but I think there's one in this chest because I prepared it. <laughs> and I connect this one onto this copper coil block here, and that should then link in. And I took this cable all the way back to the power over there. So we'll have a look at this. And it should start to pump now. It says scanning for oil deposits, and it'll start to pump it. Now it needs somewhere to, to put that oil. So we'll come to that in a minute, I think. So it should get up to here, and then it should start to scan and then it should start to pump it so we'll look so there we are mining for oil deposits so it's, de it's now mining that because that's where it needs the power from here so we should see some fluid coming into here so you can gives you this arrow which means it's working and i think this is it doesn't tell you what's no tip on what this one's saying, but the fluid's empty and it's actually scanning. So it's going to do oil deposit 10 of 22. So I put down 22 blocks down there, I think. So it's now going to start pumping oil. Let's go and have a look at that. It's uh, night time. I'll just see you down there in where I put the blocks. Right. And here they are. <laughs> this is what they actually look like. So these are normal blocks. Here's oil source blocks, which are full. And these ones are depleted ones. So they're I says actually full, but I think they're depleted because they've gone grey. So they're emptied out. And I put down 22 of these. And I should have been finding these at zero, 00. So that basically is just those blocks. So now it's going to pump those up. So what I'm going to do now is go back up to upstairs and go and get the... If I can get it like this. And go and get everything else ready. So I'll see you in a few seconds. So the pump jack out puts it to here. So we could put actually... a. I've picked up fluid pipes 
from the mess of engineering they should work in fact as it happens I can connect these onto here like that and it should output it um, having said that I'm, to be honest with you I haven't done it this way before so I might have messed that up so we should then be able to input this onto a side I think I don't think I think with these barrels you can only go top and bottom so let's just set this up and hopefully oh first of all we need to check we've actually got some oil in here haven't we let's look at this so now we have actually got four buckets of oil so that is still scanning away and it should be mining those so let's see if we can get those four buckets of oil into this tank here so if I need, I need a bucket in my hand, I've got some oil buckets here, which I actually picked up from there. So sure enough, it's got four buckets of oil in there. So this has now got no buckets of oil in it, so look. Yeah, empty. So it is compatible with um, immersive engineering, which is great. Because the trouble with the uh, the standard tanks from um, Magneticraft, you can't transport them. You, just, you can put them down, you can put stuff into it. Um, you can bucket it into it like that so put another one down like this and then we can get some water let's go and get some water I think those aren't water source blocks so I'm just going to get quick, quickly get some water from a source block which I don't think I've got over here let's see in a second when I get some right here we go so I can right click this into, it, into here no problem at all but if I break it put it back down again you lose the liquids in it which isn't very helpful really because I prefer it to have it not because the only thing that you've got in magnetic craft to transport fluids, as far as I can see, are these tanks. So anyway, we can we can break this tank here now. We've got some oil in it. Let's just take the set tank out of it. And then it can carry on processing to its heart's content. And it will actually produce some more. Now, one thing I haven't showed you. <laughs> because for some reason or other, I forgot. And I got cut to catch to my thing. Oh, funny. Took full damage from that. <laughs> So what we see over here is the magnetic craft stuff, which I've gone the wrong, wrong way around. And you'll see it's actually got the pump, uh, the, the steam engines are actually working properly. I'll turn this on again now, because I, I think we can have this um, things running and let build up some heat, which is fine. So that'll actually keep the pumps, uh, the engines running here to keep the steam. And they should actually have st steam symbols as well, but I might have turned off my... Um, particle effects a bit because it was raining so the next thing to build with this oil we've got this oil here we've got three buckets of oil plus this tank here is the heater now the heater is this one it's an oil heater so let's take this down here actually I'll need these pipes and I probably need some insulated pipes as well so I've decided I'm going to set it up like this so that you need more than one heater in fact it tells you in the book um, so let's just have a look at this book here and let's use this one because it's in the Kashyyyk temperature let's shift left click right click and select the magnetic craft one and then have a look at this so we need to look at multi blocks so we need the oil heater here so the oil heater allows you to heat up fluid to the boiling point the machine doesn't require any fuel or electricity instead it uses an external heat source so the machine accepts heat from the bottom. The heater is used for oil refining. It'll heat up the oil till it becomes hot crude. Then it can be distilled in the refinery. The heater is slower than the refinery, so you need several heaters to get the maximum speed. So the speed of the machine depends on the recipe. But by default, it uses 60 watts. So, but that's heat rather than power. So what we now need to do is, you'll see here, I put, I prepared this insulated pipe and it, as far as I remember it doesn't matter where it is so we'll put this down here like this and it'll show us this it's only a 3x3 three three machine so it needs some support columns Y which I've got a lot of these because it's got a lot of them in here I think we need support column Y everywhere like this and they're all support column Y so we'll double check it because this is actually not in the book oh no that's wrong that's what yeah that's definitely wrong these are actually zeds as you see it says it got a y and it's expecting an orientation in the z which is this direction so that's now it says expecting air so we just put those down like this and that should be then happy with it so the next row is these two and then the last row will be this one
Okay, so now it wants us another Y column up here. <laughs> it's, all, it's just found out and it wants a corrugated iron box, which is this one now. Let's get those out of here. So there was 14 and those and I think 14 and 12 of these corrugated iron. So it isn't exactly cheap on your iron resources. So it wants here now, it wants a Y. Okay. I have to do it like that. I have to shift click those into place and those that will also be a Y and you'll see in a while, you'll see why in a minute. Ha ha. It's all right. Do that a bit faster. So it wants support column Y. So these last three are just support column Y's. So that's it. That's all we need to do for this one. Right, click it and then we get this oil heater. So it takes fuel in at the back here and it should have power as you see it's got the heat it didn't really have to be in the center it just has to be underneath it so now it's getting the heat from the um from this machine over here so i need what i need to do now is to put down a connector and a tank now we can use them, these tanks i'll use the iron pipe from magnetic craft and we can put it down like this then we can then put this tank on top of it and you'll notice that the it says it's an input tank I think that's right let's find out so let's go and get that some of that oil from that crate this is actually a magnetic craft wooden box which is a single chest I thought it was appropriate for this particular exercise so now it doesn't go in but there's a new tool in magnetic craft that wasn't there before um, and that's the wrench and we didn't have a recipe for this before it's this one here So the recipe for that is basically three pieces of iron, well, four pieces of iron with a plate and two pieces of redstone. It's not, it's reasonably expensive for this, but, and then you can right shift, right click these, um, right click these flanges. And the first one is to connect, to make it an output. And you saw the liquid go down there. And then you'd right click it again, it disappears, but you can still right click it. So that's the direction. So now we can actually have a look at this and you'll see it's got hot crude in here so it took one bucket of fluid and it made 10 buckets of hot crude so now we have to feed this hot crude into a refinery now the refinery is a big structure let's have a look at the book and tell us what it says it doesn't actually tell you much about it this one just tells you this normally they have a page that tells you what you need for the oil heater and there's the refinery one so it's uh, three by three by nine high so it basically separates the thing. So the this one requires steam to work and the speed depends on the recipe. Okay. So the first level is the fluid input and at the, at the back and the steam is input at the sides. The rest of the levels are outputs for every side, uh, indicating the type of the output. And that's it. So it doesn't give you that much about it. But we obviously need a nine high. We're going to need a, something clever like a pair of lad some ladders, I think. I might not have those with me. Let's get those out of here. I wonder if I've got them in my backpack. I think I was... Pro nope, I'm going to have to go and get some. Actually, what I'm going to have to get is... Probably not that is. I'm probably going to need... Um, um, scaffolding, because it's better. So let's... I'll go and get the scaffolding and come right back. All right, I have them with me now. So... Well, I'm basically I've got these yellow markers. Yeah, the markers were both there were concrete markers really, just to indicate where I should put things. Because I've set everything up, and it does take a while to figure out exactly where things need to go. So this is a steam input that's coming from basically underneath ground, under the ground here. It's going all the way across to this, and joining up with I think this pipe. It should be joining up with this pipe. Yeah, it will join up with this pipe when I connect it in. So at the moment it's empty. So what we'll do is we'll just assemble this machine. You see, it'll, of course, it's going to start off and tell me what I need. So we need some support column Ys. And I think in this one, it's all Ys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down here a, yes, something to stand on. Uh, we'll just carry on building this up. So the whole bottom row is just support columns. Oops, hold on. That said Z, didn't it? I think this is going to get, so it's, it's exactly the same as it was for the other ones. I have to break these off. 
So there's the heater record, uh, one. So it should be just like this, I think. One Y and then three Zs, two Zs. So look. Yes. So now it's but it's all the same recipe all the way up this now. So but it starts off. I'll put one of these down again. So we have a, a place to climb up. <laughs> oh, this tree's in the way for a second or two anyway. I'll break it out of the way. So we'll cut set up here and we'll carry on. So we need some Ys, and then it's going to say we need these corrugated machines. So I'll put those down quickly like this. And then it's going to need another Y down here. And another Y down here. Now have I got with me my builder's wand? Because I've got a feeling I should be able to do this with my builder's wand as well. So I'll have a quick look in here if I've got it. Yes, I have good. So we'll just try and doing this with the builder's wand as well. So let's set that select that. Yes, that works. And that works. Good. And so we go up here and rinse and repeat until we finish this off because it's all as I said before it's all the same let's get up two blocks and get rid of this block up here <laughs> I don't think the tree's going I just think I did have messed it up a bit because I have moved things around when I from the first time I did this there you see it goes a bit faster with the builders wrong so we've only got two more to do and it does tell you it's compatible which is great so I'll just go up two more and then I'm going to jump down here because I'm going to jump into the water if I miss if I don't get it into the look gravel there <laughs> so that's it ready now we right click this and then it forms into this very large tower as you can see actually quite impressive so it says that the fluid comes in the back here and the output of this one is from the top so we've got to take the output from the top here and I can't get up because we're too low so let's put down a block here two blocks in fact and that will allow us to get up so this is where the, the fluid comes out of here so the hot glue is going to go out of here and then come into this at the back here and then these three are here are outputs on each of these three faces and you'll see why in a second because it's a bit uh, complicated so what I'm going to do is I'm going to presume that there was another machine going to put another machine down here so what we'll do is we'll take these two one across like this jump down because it's safe enough to jump down at this one and then come down here like that and then come into this one so now maybe this machine has got some no fluid in it yet okay good so it needs steam and it needs this hot oil so the hot oil to get this out I've got to do the same thing as I did last time and that's the right click this with the hand with the wrench to change it to orange and that should then start to push fluid into here like this yeah so we've got some hot crude coming into the second slot so the first slots for steam so let's go and connect up the steam now so all I need to do is put down a pipe here and that's just about it which connect up two up here and then it connects into this and then it'll say, you see it's now getting steam and this hot crude has been then converted. So it's got heavy oil, light oil and LPG. Now, <laughs> so where is the stuff that I actually need, which is lubricant? It's not there yet. So let's have a look at those three things. So, magnetic craft. So they're actually at the top. So the uses of hot crude, we really need the the liquids as opposed to the buckets but that'll help no problem so look for uses of that and hot here we go so we're in the refinery so if you take hot crude and then refine that so you then get heavy oil light oil and lpg the next one along the line was um heavy oil so let's look at the uses of that one and you can refine that again so you get oil residue gasoline and lubricant so that's what we have to do now the trouble is <laughs> I tried this quite I tried to put stuff on it and the fortunate the tap the pipes from magnetic curve just take a little bit of fluid in fact let's do it on yeah this side mm, yes this side will do I think no I can't press shift on these things <laughs> What I can do though is knock it, knock three of these down, and do, do it slightly differently. 
So what I'm going to do is just knock this down here. Um, let's turn my axe and just knock these down and put it into a different place. Doesn't take a few seconds. Get a bit of XP while I'm doing that. So really what I want to do is be able to go up three high on one side and six high on the other side. So let's just um, put down three here and here. So I want to go up three. And this one I want to take up three. I think I want to take up one of these to six. Oops. So we can actually reach the other ones. So what I want to do now is put a tank on these. So we can take these iron pipes from Magnetic Craft. It doesn't matter whether you use a Magnetic Craft or the um, immersive engineering ones that are compatible. So at the moment I've got these. Now these take 150, 160 millibuckets. So if I shift right click that on there like that, and this on there like that, and then with that one, we can then connect those in to another tank. So let's go and get some tanks. I've got some prepared already with the bits in it already because I was testing. So these are empty metal barrels. Lubricant gasoline and the other one that came out of that was let's take one of those. One. That's going to be oil residue. It should be a bucket of oil residue here. Where's it going to? There we go. And then we've got light oil and LPG. Those are the three that come out of this. So we get heavy oil first of all, and I haven't got any of that, so that's that one. So this one we'll use for heavy oil, and that comes out the bottom. So now, with the most of engineering tanks, you always put them, the, the, by default the input's always the top, and the output's the bottom. So let's just, I want to be careful because I don't want to fill it back in again. So I've basically got to start at the bottom and work my way up. But it doesn't matter at the moment, because these pipes are not going to output anything until we put it on. So you can see that one there's got an output at the bottom. So what we'll do is we shall go up and put these onto these other two connectors. You see that's not connected in, but that will be empty. I need a bucket down there. Let's get a bucket out of here. Good to show us what we actually look. See that's empty. But in the actual thing it's not empty. So if we're looking here, so heavy if we've got four hundred millibuckets of heavy oil, which is the bottom slot. 300 of light oil and 300 of LPG. So now we've got light oil. I've already got some in, in here, so it doesn't make much difference. We'll put it on here like that. But this time we're going to have to come down here and it will connect to the bottom of this as well. In fact, that's what I'm trying to really get rid of. Let's get rid of this one and put back my axe so I can go down one block and deal with that. You see it's connected in here. So we've simply right click this one twice and that should then disconnect. In fact, hopefully it didn't put anything into this tank. Let's just double check. <laughs> it put all of it in, brilliant. So this one's now empty. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do is break this one and put it back, swap the two over. If it doesn't disappear, no, I've got it back in again, good. So now what we've got in this one, we've got LPG that goes to the top. So the best thing to do is possibly put in here oil residue. That's no, that's later on. An empty barrel down here. So I can, it's just a bit complicated, isn't it? So let's go down and put this one on here. To get everything in the right order, you have to put it back on and then come up. Now this time, when I put the next one on, which should be the light oil here, it's not going to connect to there. It she doesn't. So the same, we need to do the same for the other side. This is why I bought built this tower over here. this one over here I can just about reach yeah so I want to make sure that this one doesn't connect but unfortunately you can't do it until you've actually connected something in so let's put one that's LPG yeah double check it and you'll see it's going to push that down into this tank now that can't go into this tank here because it's got light oil into it this is LPG it's not going to push it out because we haven't activated that yet but we can certainly break this one so it doesn't connect like that so then they should be okay so we simply right click these now and that should empty out this um, can I get down there safely not probably not let's take this one down I don't need to be up quite so high but I can jump down here now so I'll come back in a second when it's daylight so now all of these should got extra fluid in this one so let's go and look at whose fluid we've got in each one of those get the bucket in 
heavy oil, 400 millibuckets. And then we have to remove these. All of these will now have to be full up. So we've got to remove these again. Because I've got to post process this heavy oil again in order to get lubricant. And you can't do it on another side because these tanks will have something in it. So let's just get an empty one. I need a an empty tank from somewhere. You can't use pipettes on here either. So let's just go and get an empty tank from here. That's one of these. As you can see, inventory gets full very quickly. And we can put this onto any of these and it shouldn't it should remain empty. Yes it is. So there's nothing in the pipes, which is good. We'll double check it because it's it, <laughs> if there is something in here. LPG Ah oh, of course yes it swapped my tank over, didn't it? I haven't got the empty one in my hand anymore, it swapped it over. So that's an empty one, let's put that on there. Light oil 300 millibucket. So it did take some light oil out of here. Why didn't it take it out last time? Oh, hold on. Was that the light oil bucket? Let's tell you what. Let's put them down in here. We can then see them better because it's a bit of a nuisance, to be honest with you. Because the mixing up is, is awkward. Oil residue. LPG light oil, light oil. So the, the light oil didn't get taken in. That's easy to fix. Let's just pick this one up here and put it on top of that one. And then this, this one become empty and the other one will get the light oil into it. So now we've got an empty an empty tank. We so that one therefore should be empty as it should be. Let's double check this thing. See they're all empty down here, but you can't tell whether there's anything in this pipe. Unfortunately, there's no way of knowing. But I'm sure that now there isn't anything in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this heavy heavy oil oh which one is it now get the bucket or is it heavy oil this is the one we want because we've got 400 milli buckets we're going to process this again so this time we don't need to take the thing out of here so all i need to do now is to put onto this if i can get on if i can get up that high that is i probably can jump or put down a block let's just put down some scaffolding here and then we can put this on top of that like that. That was too close. Now that's going to do the same thing. It will still be in here, so we'll still see about, oh no, it's gone out. So it's actually emptied it out. And that should now be in here, which is already gone. You see, it's already got fuel. Where's that rest of it gone to? It says it's empty. I hope that it's not stuck in this pipe. That would be actually bad. I'm not sure that I have to do that. I have to put it in this end. I've got a feeling of the pipe itself. So there should be some, if it's got empty, it's got some fuel, which is gasoline. These two are empty. Have I got, ah, yes, of course. Very bad. <laughs> What's happened is, they're in the pipes, as I've been saying before. So we've got um, some gasoline, which is fuel. So we've got some gasoline, lubricant, gasoline, and an empty one, oil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the empty tank, empty barrel here, and put this on the top one, which is where the lubricant is. And you'll see it gets a little bit of lubricant in here because we didn't have very much in here, 40 millibuckets. So that was enough to go into this pipe. As I said before, the pipe was 106. 60 millibuckets gives you a bit confusing, doesn't it? Let's get this up here. Let's go and put this down where I've got my other barrels here. So what have we got? Lubricant here, 40, and lubricant there, so 344. It doesn't matter where I put it, really, does it? If I just put it down on top of it, and then put this one on top of that. That will empty out into this one. What have I got? And this one, gasoline, which is fuel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put them down a bit messy. And we'll take them out one at a time. That's, and that's now empty, so I can break this one. There must be a better way of doing this, but at the moment I haven't found out really what it is. You don't want, it won't mix the oils, but you'll see that it's, now it's got 200 milli buckets of gasoline, which was correct. Because we saw that before, because it had some in the tank. 
So we'll put this in the gasoline one. If I get right, there we go, gasoline. Wait for that to empty out, which doesn't take very long, and break it again. And then the last one will be oil residue, which comes out here. So really I do need two refineries to get this to work properly. In fact, you probably need actually th three more refineries because each one of these is going to take a lot. So 160 millibuckets of oil residue, which is exactly what's in the pipe. Let's take that out of here. I'll put this down on the first one because I remember that as being oil residue. So there you go. So that's how you make lubricant. Wow, isn't that hard work? Huh? Now I got there's a feeling with um, immersive petroleum you can also do that as well with immersive petroleum which we shall cover in a future video. So that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's actually taken quite a long time to, to figure out exactly what's how it works especially when I couldn't find any actual oil. I didn't like having cheats in in a, in a survival world. Anyway until next time bye for now.